Hi everyone, my name is Vladimir Baic and I will be talking about Ancestry Packages approach, which aims in merging uniparental and autosomal genetic histories into the same picture. I am coming from the field of human population genetics and we are often using diverse set of genetic markers to describe relationship between populations. By investigating mitochondrial DNA that is inherited from other's offspring, we can get insights into maternal history of populations. By investigating the Y chromosome that is inherited from fathers to sons, we can get insights into paternal history of populations. And finally, we can study the autosomal data inherited from both parents. However, those different types of markers for the same set of populations are often described in separate studies and they are rarely compared to each other. And if so, those comparisons are on descriptive level. Here, I am trying to simultaneously use all of those markers into a single set of analysis, which I termed ancestry packages approach. Let's imagine two ancestral populations, blue and brown, for which we would have estimates of autosomal ancestry frequencies and frequencies of mitochondrial and Y chromosome haplogroups. If those two populations are randomly mating to create population 3, we are expecting to see estimates of all three types of markers to be the same. However, if those two ancestral populations are admixing in a sex bias pattern, for example, blue population is contributing all of the males in the population 4, we would expect to see discrepancies in estimates when comparing different kinds of markers. By investigating contribution of each of the ancestral packages per marker across populations, we can find cases of sex bias gene flow. Here we can see that sex bias mating has caused discrepancies in the estimates between markers in population 4, while all the other populations that are free of sex bias processes have overlapping values for all markers. The main idea of the approach is to start with a set of populations for which we would estimate autosomal ancestry frequencies, here shown in different colors, using, for example, admixture program, which is a commonly used tool in the field of population genetics. For the same set of populations, we would also get our frequencies of mitochondria and Y chromosome haplogroups where each of the populations might have different and diverse set of uniparental haplogroups. Classifying those haplogroups in accordance with their putative geographic origin is time-consuming task, which requires detailed literature search. Even more, for many of those haplogroups, there are no known associations with putative place of origin. Using ancestry packages approach, we are trying to associate uniparental lineages to the autosomal ancestry components inferred by admixture and let the data speak for itself instead of spending time on detailed literature search that might not bring us benefits. To demonstrate the approach, let's focus on this dummy dataset that contains nine po populations from three different geographic regions, pink, blue and brown. In each of the regions, the last population is constructed to be a product of a sex bias gene flow. By performing weighted correspondence analysis on the frequency estimates on all three types of markers for this set of populations, we can represent population ship relationships accounting for all markers in a single graph. The relationship between populations is inferred based on the underlying differences in frequencies of different markers across populations, shown here in grey. In the next step, we can use the output of correspondence analysis to perform hierarchical clustering on principal components in order to infer clusters of highly associated uniparental lineages and autosomal and sensory components, which I termed as ancestry packages. Once we defined ancestry packages, we can investigate the sex bias processes. Here, we can see estimates of mitochondria, Y chromosome, and autosomal ancestry frequencies for each cluster. Only populations 3, 6, and 9 show discrepancies between different types of markers, indicating that they were impacted by a sex bias processes. For example, in population 9, most of the mitochondrial lineages are associated with brown cluster, while most of the Y chromosome lineages are associated with the pink cluster, which is in accordance to how we constructed population 9 in our dummy dataset. In order to test the approach, we applied it to a global dataset with 51 populations for which we collected autosomal, Y chromosome and mitochondrial frequency estimates. 
In addition, we applied it to a local dataset of southern African populations for which we additionally included frequencies of lactase persistence alleles to illustrate that the ancestry packages approach could be extended to include any other markers for which frequency estimates are available. Due to the time constraints, I would focus only on the results of the local scale. Once the frequency data was assembled, we performed weighted correspondence analysis on it to investigate relationship between populations, accounting for all types of the markers included in the dataset. In the next step, we defined four clusters that roughly correspond to different admixture events in the history of Southern African populations. These include East African cluster, corresponding to admixture with Eastern African pastoralists, West African cluster, corresponding to admixture with expanding Bantu populations, and Eurasian cluster, most probably testifying to the more recent admixture during the colonial time. In order to check if such clustering made sense, we checked if the assignment of uniparental lineages into certain clusters was supported with previous literature. As example, the Y chromosome haplogroup R1A, which has been associated with Eurasian cluster in our analysis, is indeed in highest frequency in Europe. To our surprise, we found that many more associations were in good agreement with the previous literature. We did not find only confirmatory cases, but also novel associations. For example, previously Y chromosome haplogroup B2A couldn't be clearly associated with Bantu or Khoisan groups, but in our analysis we could finally associate it with Bantu expansion, which brought West African component to Southern Africa. Once we defined ancestry packages, we could investigate sex bias gene flow. And we found that in Southern African populations, there are more mitochondria than Y chromosome lineages associated with Khoisan ancestry, suggesting sex bias processes with all incoming populations, including East African pastoralists, West African Bantu populations, and probably more recently European colonists. As an example, Ghana population shows one of the strongest signals of the sex bias gene flow. Ghana's mitochondrial lineages are predominantly Khoisan in origin, while the Y chromosome are predominantly Bantu in origin. This is in accordance with anthropological sources, which described Ghana population as a result of admixture between Bantu males and Khoisan females. With this, I would like to conclude that highly associated uniparental lineages and autosomal ancestry components could be seen as ancestry packages. That ancestry packages approach can be used to classify haplogroups in accordance with autosomal ancestry components without a priori knowledge about their geographic distribution. That this approach is very useful in studying sex bias admixture, and that ancestry packages approach provides unified picture of population ship relationships, accounting for both uniparental and autosomal genetic markers. And thank you very much for your attention.